Oi, oi. Ready or not, we are live. Flat Earth British, Martin Leake speaking, Flat Thumbs, and welcome to all. Good to see you all. <laughs> Let's just check my comms in order. Everything fine there in chat. Thanks everybody for waiting. No. Here's Martich. Sounds absolutely fantastic. So thanks everybody for waiting. Flat thumbs to all. Much love and appreciation to each and every one of you. And thanks, uh, if that's even a good word, but we'll say thanks. Tar, that's better, Mish. Tar, uh, for everything that the Flat Earth British Think Tank has achieved, which will all become apparent during this vlog. Now, I know it's, um, I do apologize actually for coming back so soon um, after my last post, but I need to get this off my chest and basically I need to be able to go to sleep uh, tonight because after learning and putting all of this that was put together, if you're wondering what's going on and how any of this is even humanly possible, it's basically because I'm Columbo and Lee is Columbo. Oh no, I'm Sherlock Holmes. Um, Lee's not Watson, he's a bit better than Watson, so he's... I'm Mork, Leah Zorson, and everyone else in the think tank that has contributed, which has been just my splatting answers coming through, which has basically floored me. Um, and the biggest one of all, when I say this back in my mind, like I was doing all last night, um, I couldn't even believe what I was thinking or even saying. And everything has seemed really, really different and strange and shifted since all of this information last night that was put together. Of that of British. So um, let's do a little mind exercise just to check this simulation out, guys. Okay. Now, remember what I said about God's not listening to you moan and whinge and grizzle, guys. He's too busy. It's too busy being you. Okay. So you're wasting your breath there. <laughs> so on that note, on that note, what we're going to cover tonight is going to be mind blowing, all of it, guys. Okay. When I when I say that this, this is an important post, I feel that it is. Okay. So we'll do this mind experiment now. So I'm going to with you take my time because I need to take breaths. I get all hyper when I'm live. Is take a look around your room. Just relax and just take a slow little look around your room now, because we're all in different parts of this plane, but we're all in the same moment weirdly and spookily so have a look around your room and then be mindful of the way you feel right now try that okay then remember that feeling okay then we'll go from here now this is going to be a fun vlog as well it's going to be fantastic fun at the end as well because we're going to think about Barbarella psychedella which will be really really cool you'll like that so information has been put together and everything has changed and everything was not exactly how I thought it would be but nothing ever is okay we're gonna think about God we're gonna think about God or us okay and the way that this reality works and our ability to manifest our reality are we projecting it through our pineal gland well, possibly so we're gonna think about God and God, who seems to be, or whatever it is, okay, if you want to think in the form of simulation, that's fine. Whatever it is, okay, is cursed. It messed up big time when it created, because it created evil in this place, a free will. So, God messed up. God is cursed. We're going to have a look at aspects of this reality. I'm going to think about God a little bit later on. I think you might find it a little bit trippy. We found the ship. We found the ship. It was hidden all the time in plain sight. Okay. Once I read this, which was contributed by um, an email, she put it together. As soon as I read it, I knew it to be true. It floored me. Uh, from a, I think it's L and M show, which is a lady called Kim, who sent me this. So we, we really do appreciate this. So the ship. We found the ship. The ship, the small ship, that is in the bigger ship that we are in. In fact, a ruined and wrecked ship, possibly capsized. 
And this ship that we are on um, is subject to, all oh, maritime law, the Phoenician law, is subject to salvage rights. It's like if there was a submarine on the bottom of the ocean. Now, everybody has to be dead in order to get salvage rights. Now, remember, after each reset, everybody is gone. And they come in, Freemasonry, kaching, pick up a civilization, hijacked. Bring them in some new arrivals from wherever, underground, off pond. Doesn't even matter at this stage. So, we're going to think about this place where we live possibly be in the mid deck or middle earth and i'm going to think about an aspect that came into my mind in an instant and a flash which was the baking tray or the cake train idea or the triple tier cake tray three theory which actually fits with a lot of ancient mythology which was kaching when i put it together so that was brilliant uh what else are we going to think about so I'm going to post as well later, um, second half of this post, um, absolutely, probably the most fantastic, I can't even believe this stuff, um, mud flood evidence, but it's not your usual just mud flood buildings, etc. This is mud flood being removed at the time. And these photos range from about 1860s to 1900 mark in Oslo and other cities in Norway. And it's just a mind blow. So we'll have a look at them a bit later on. We're going to revisit that site, that weird, spooky US base site that we visited on the last post. Because we went back there. We know the name of it. We know this place is called Thula. It's a base, a military base, etc. But I followed the roads out of there, wondering where all the cars were going in the far north, east, uh, uh, far north, west east yes of greenland because it's like you know, almost north pole um, and they went nowhere i mean they disappear they went into the ground i think they're all underground just like the movie greenland where they got an arc for when you know there's an extinction level event hack gonna go underway in the new movie the biggest movie of this year next to songbird another apocalyptic movie go figure um in they give you the idea that there's these great arcs and underground installations in Greenland. So we'll have a look at that as well. So yeah, there's going to be some um, weird stuff uh, being said in this, guys. It's a, it's just stuff that's never been said before, thought before, or in, even existed before. It's the most mind blowing thing you can ever ever imagine. So at this stage of the game, okay, the stage is set and everything is in place at this stage. So, let's just hope they don't reset the stage, eh? Don't worry about that. So, let's uh, give a few of you a shout. Squirrel Sniper's in the house. Misha's in the house as well. Good to see you, Squirrel Sniper, my epic brother. So, yeah, it's only two days since my last post, but as I said, um, it's been a lot happening. There's been a lot happening. So, Lost at Sea, Save Our Souls, do you think so? I'll have a think about that, too. Uh, so, Alva Billy's here. I am human here. Good to see you. I can't actually see that. My eyesight's bloody rubbish. Angela73. Mudflooder. Yo, Stan is in the house. Zamroth is in the house. Helen's in the house. Lieutenant. Lieutenant H. And Josh. John. And Sketchy was Glenn. And Ben. Andre. And Jimmy Shirt. And Pippi. And Kat. Who's funny. And Dave Knuckles, Jeff Sure, Thanks Sure, Aaron Sure, Just Chris is here, only just Chris. Um, Patrick Rogers is here, Robin is here, Jeffrey Griffin is here, Pink Kush, ooh, ka uh, Lemon Cake, eh, Joy? Oh, very nice. Nice variety he's flying around, eh? Uh, Theo is here, and Kim is here, Kimberly, excuse me, um, Shane, oh, JT. Oh, Stephen Richards, I uh, good to see you. Juice man strikes again. Yeah, it's gonna be very juicy. This post it's gonna be a bit of a mind blow. So, I think I better just get underway. Now we'll start with said ship. Now, when I fucking thought this, the instant I thought, I, I thought myself, oh yeah, how could I possibly have missed that? Now, the ship. Okay, that we uh, detectively put together, okay, and it was the only conclusion left is what we need, was this ship. For what? Well, we're undecided. We've not really been shown that just yet, but that's as far as we've got in this, whatever's happening. So, anyway. 
So, uh, the ship. Okay, now in the language, we have found that the clues lie with the etymology, the breakdown of words, and everything is in there. Hi, Zan Moxie, Oggy Oggy, my brother. So, what we found is words with ship on the end, um, like relationship, citizenship, okay, fellowship, and friendship, all represent a collective. True, a collective. Now, 500 of you watching, can anybody think of an important collective of people at this moment in time? Like the Great Flat Earth British Think Tank, for example. Great Flat Earth British Think Tank is the ship, guys. It's us. Fellowship, whatever it is, it's us. It is us. So it seems that we're like pivotal in whatever's going on here. You know, we could think of it as like fulfilling prophecy or whatever is ongoing in this story of reality with the total fuckery ongoing and on us on top. Um, it's all part of it. So, you, you know, highly important stuff in my Brian. That is what's going on, guys. Okay, just deductive reasoning. Follow it to the obvious conclusion. It's you guys. Mm. So, we found our ship, and it's flat of British think tank. The very good and very strong, very true flat of British think tank. That's you guys. Because we stayed true, you see, didn't we? We've had no fuckery all the way along on this ride, have we? I know. So, I'm going to be... So, on that note, okay, that we are the ship, and we have a very, seems, important job um, on... <laughs> We really do. And more important than I would have actually thought. Now, if you know Flat Earth British and you've been following me for years, you'll know that I'm in sort of or am in the saving humanity business. Or at least I thought I was. But I still am, in a way, in a roundabout way. All will make sense. Okay. Censorship. There's another one, but sense our ship is smell sense like sensor okay sense our ship the ship we're on which is another clue wadam to what this place is don't you think they sense our ship they sense us us the ship ka-ching flat earth mothership <laughs> anyway indeed i said citizenship theo but they're all you know it all, it all paints a collective, which it is. It's a crew, it's a collective. And it's everything. Even the words when I was writing my comment to you today in the, in the community post, I realized that the word important was import ant, you know, like giant ant, us. Um, and even the word message was mess, you know, where you eat on a ship. And age, message, I was like, what the fuck? Everything is nautically themed and has the answer in the words. It's just like, what? And he's just coming to me in these flows. I'm just like, wow. And other ones today come to me. I had one sent to me, uterus. Okay. Is that you terror? You terror us or you terror as in earth? You know, it's all in the language, the answers to this, uh, to this puzzle. So yeah, we're definitely getting closer to the prize. Definitely closer to the prize. And we are getting hot. So we found our ship. That'd be us. And there's enough of us. There's 600 of us here now on a, on a Tuesday night. Yeah. Absolute fuckery in the world. But this is here, isn't it? So it's just absolutely fantastic. So make sure, could you just please share this out, if you would. Just alter my colour on that. It's like purpling me out, man. Getting purpled. Ugh. That's better. It's like an ultraviolet. Super fantastic. Great. And look where you would have won. So we're going to have some fun. I'm going to think about Barbarella Psychedella. She's a chick, not a fella. That'll be funny later on. You'll like that. It won't be rude. <laughs> anyway, and I won't be having any, like, out of control, hysterical laughing fits this post, I can assure you. I'm going to be okay, I think. Okay. So... Absolute fuckery. Yes, well said, Valiant Bull. Absolute fuckery indeed. We'll put that up. Oh, I just missed it. There you are. Absolute fuckery indeed. What a what a reality to be living in. Just like a hell, isn't it? Just like a really shitty B movie, isn't it? So fuck flat fact says. Like 
do some likes. It's only early in the show, but I, as I said, it won't be like a three hour epic like I've done two days ago because that would be just too much content. Uh, Anisha Dennison, good to see you. Lovely. And Paul and uh, Pushkin Castle, good to see you. And Matt, who's my mate, who's regaining the balance, saying hit that like button. All else fell YouTube bullshit to read. But I've got to be honest with you, after all this information uh, that we're going to go through today, Everything has just seemed non important, wishy washy. I can't look at anything. I can't, you know, people are saying stuff, and I'm like, yeah, right, whatever. That is just so like empty compared to what we're all about to learn. So, found that shit. We're going to go on there. Salvage rights. That could be the really, real, real reason to reset. Now, can you salvage a vessel? more than once apparently yes they could take new owners new contracts new bosses salvage that motherfucker excuse my french again us okay so that is definitely um fits in with the reset cycle thing that's going on okay so um, i'm about to um, show you some stuff at the moment we're gonna have a little think about god okay now i know i've been annoying but i i i know that this place, this experience, is God experiencing itself through us. I can't exactly explain the science behind any of it, but my emotions and my feelings tell me this is indeed the case. Plus, I have put it to the test through basically intent um, and made a lot of things that would be seemingly impossible uh, happen. Now, like miracles, if you like which are not quite done and dusted just yet. So 636, seven of you, welcome to Flat Earth British. Um, flat thumbs, much love to you all. Just do that, flat thumbs, before you start, take a look around your room and remember your feelings, because I think it's important. Why? I don't even know. Anyway, much love, Zal Moxie. Uh, Jay Armstrong, good to see you all. Everybody in chat, thanks for joining in. Happily, merrily chat away while I uh, talk. Okay, now let's have a think about this. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. God, here he is. Yeah, I could be annoying if I met like a beardy dude like this. Really annoying, but I don't think I will be today. So God, okay, now well, let's have a think about um, a big aspect of our reality before we get underway, which is a big key to the whole stories sleep why do we sleep why do we need to shut off or god needs to shut off the system for eight hours how many hours a day why does god or us need to sleep and shut off now where is it exactly that we go in our sleep in our dreams what exactly is going on now just give me a moment. I need to bring my computer online to see you on in chat just to make sure I'm here. That's okay. So, Godage. Now, we're not just thinking of him in your physical form here, but it's just an analogy. But it is interesting that they're showing sleeping angels and he's pointing to them um, as in sleeping. So, oh, sorry, my eyesight is so bloody rubbish. We get underway. Infinity is a curse, like the word of God. And sleep is the drug word of God. Now, to forget equals fake oblivion, basically distraction and diversion. God needs help, and we are the answer. Imagination has no limits in infinity, and any craft will float. So, we are the actors on a stage of desperate God wanting to non-exist. The cluage there, guys, is sleep. The promise of eternal rest, sleep, to mankind is the prize to whomever can alleviate God's problem of infinity. God itself created evil, and evil is only a search, and alone, in fact, alone, alone. We're actually greater than God via its divestment. 
I thought we are actually here, guys, to save the world. But it was God, not the world. So that's what we're here for. To me, that makes absolute sense. To me, that is it. We save God, alleviate the parasite or anything bad or evil in this realm. God being us is freed from eternity. So how exactly could that be done? Well, several schools of thought, I guess, but how is I die in or in dying like Indian or die in like die in close or in the end, the end is the prize versus to be is the end of infinity. Shit. So I guess that's a double-sided coin, maybe even a three-sided coin there. And leaves little open for further investigation and thought on that matter because of the nature of our reality, in, even in the simulation thought as well, this would work. So they sold us a disastrous psyche. The actual story of psyche, the Greek mythology will actually tell you this as well is the heaven and hell scenario when it's analogy for us our, our spiritual process our human biomechanical machines wherever they are you know the way out here you know they tell you in the eagle song hotel california you can check out any time you want but you can never leave yeah is that so well, I beg to differ. And then there's the God casting out angels, the fallen ones, to um, the earthly realm or part of this earthly realm we find ourselves on. So here's hell by Canto. So this is obviously Paradise Lost. Uh, but that's not a Blake picture. But why is he holding their nose? Is there something wrong with the air? Hmm, highly interesting. <laughs> So, that makes absolute perfect sense to me. And by doing so, by association, we save everybody or not. At this stage of the game, I don't think that everybody is meant to be saved. Because I don't think that's the way it works. I don't think there are all true players on the stage in this place. As sad as it seems. But they do recycle it. Several methods, as we all know. Advanced technologies that can turn stone to mush or dust. Matter in this place means nothing to the technology of these otherworldly beings, whatever you want to call them. So, yeah, Michael Angel's uh, Sistine Chapel sealing the painting of Godage in a physical form, uh, delivering. Um, creation to Adam Atom, uh, the first of probably the resetters, <laughs> maybe after a reset. Um, and this is basically you can overlay a pineal gland over the image of God, and it fits perfectly on this conical shell that they've put him in. So it, it sort of paints the you know, that this projected, if you like, uh, reality that we perceive, think of it scientific terms, quantum mechanic terms, if you like, um, of wave function and collapse, it all works the same in my eyes, spirituality, if you want to call it that, is God, perceiving this reality through our eyes. This is why we recognize one another, I recognize a stranger, myself in every stranger's eyes, is basically what I experience too, I see aspects of myself in Everybody I meet. But they sold us this horrific tale of apocalyptic nature. And then this stuff's going to just, just basically eat away at the psyche. People thinking, you know, I have to, you know, this is a, a total fuck up to the, to the human story. Is this, is this narrative of heaven and hell, this 
bullshit narrative of heaven and hell. I'll tell you where we th I think we are. And there's Zeus, who's on an eagle that blinds us. Jesus, Zeus. I think we all know who this character is. In the clouds, this Venetian, or this program. So if you want to think of it in terms of programs and there's programs in here and the stage is set and now we know what needs to be done and I'm really guessing we know how to do it as well. And the think tank is just a load of like-minded people who manage to recognize one another, get together, recognizing true genius in a collective because that's where it works and pull in just miracle after miracle with a hat just absolutely unbelievable so i'm not sure what's happening with this uh, christ character seems to um, be discombobulated and in fact blindfolded but you see a lot with deities we'll see that a little bit later on in barbarella as well so god was lonely he created his lego world so we could experience the lives of all funny little ant people realm and experience their existences subjectively or not both really so the resetting up this is a big part of the tale isn't it you see this with all of their all of their symbology so there's god i'm guessing with his son very hippie looking aren't they so they could be like literally god in a physical realm somewhere else <laughs> a coder if you like so i thought this was really good so you got a god in his creation but it shows you you know a circle grassy plain with water all around and the sun and the move moving around that and water all the way around that nothing else outside there though but pretty much nailed that pretty much nailed that in that uh, renaissance artwork <laughs> pretty good and this one as well the same thing this is the creation and there's God telling them to get in there because they're in the wrong world. This is that portal jump thing that keeps going on or not. But there seems to be um, some sort of angel casting them out through a portal. Which is interesting connected with what I'm going to be talking about a little bit later on in this post concerning. Um, three tier earth. Hi, hi Mel. Hi everybody. I'm, hi Campbell. I know I'm caught up with you, Campbell, but I've been up the wall with like research. My head's been spinning out. Kind of, you know, just all of this. It's just like, what? What's going on with my Brian? Which I was. I've been like Brian mashed. So here it goes again, this portal thing that they come through. These look like, you know, like they've actually, these Chadabanuskis with a trident have like literally come up from the earth after a reset. I don't know why there's flying people, by the way. So. I will uh, conclude a little bit later. So, yeah, the ship is the uh, great flat earth British think tank crew, it would seem, from deduct deductive reasoning. That was the only thing that I resonated all the way along. As soon as, as, soon as um, it was said to me, I was like, yeah, of course it is. Why didn't I even realize that earlier? Um, and it is not humanity that we are here to save, but it is God. Um, we save God and everything else will be saved. Uh, by association it's going to be brilliant so that's this the game at the moment i seem a little bit weird even saying these words but it is weird saying these words so this is what i was uh, thinking about with my little epiphany moment was like cake earth now i've said all along i have said all along i think we live in mid, mid you know middle earth because you know the tolkien book and you know all of the lords of the rings itch they tell you they know we're on middle earth and i was like yeah yeah defo defo we're on middle earth get it get it and there's um, all sorts of nation cultures which will tell you exactly the same so i think it helps with um you know visualizing and the definite double torus fits in with each one of these it would encompass each of these planes um beautifully me think this so yeah we could be on the middle plane and there could be one above us an ocean here plane above us um, and one below us which could be in fact paradise because this is above and not below yes and notice how they're all connected well funny the cake tray okay it's exactly like the norse mythology 
tree and it's rainbow bridges where you find that these these routes through each tray to each tray dried up via these tubes or ports and you get in this case this is quite a good uh, good example so when you get to like norse mythology and i'm sure you all watched thor and all the other avengers films a lot of you uh, for our sins but you see rainbow bridge don't you and there's a gatekeeper there and then you sort of just you know, i don't portal or what have you to the next level which could be you know asgard and then there's push up to another level so i think we're in a like a, a, a multi-tiered building asian theology say yeah we're in, in a in a, a building with different stories different floors different levels you know it's about definitely the indian indian mythology will tell you this um so i think yeah um if we are in the ship as said then all of this is in this very big ship and we're on the middle decks in middle earth in tween decks we're in tween decks so that was a really nice one i picked that because it was basically um oh tiffany it's the tiffany one so that is a really good example of free tier cake training that gives you a nice example of you know what's going on so they 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 know exactly the same in norse mythology as well you get the same thing going on with the world tree don't you so there's the middle earth asgard where we're all living on and then there's these rainbow bridges somewhere over the rainbow to another place which is paradise it's terra centra another level there so you get the three levels just like in the cake tray is that interesting so asgard the nine worlds you got nine in that asgard here though but still and you when you see the film they show you a flat earth be stupid because they got water running off the edge so there they are rainbow bridges now the rainbow bridge is associated with music concerts a rainbow bridge to the rolling stones there's the judy garland song somewhere over the rainbow there's just so many in you know associations with rainbows and otherworldly things yeah, like another world beyond the rainbow. There's a crock of gold beyond the rainbow. You know, and the rainbow to me is like, is that the, the reflection of the domage? Could be more, could be more. So there you are. We've got three distinctive levels, just like our cake tray here, haven't, haven't we? They've got nine realms, you know, but I'm just saying it's three distinctive cake trays linked by wormholeage. So yeah, um, the Hindus, they got uh, the turtle going on haven't they so if you turn a turtle upside down it would be a boat it would float in fact they both would so they haven't exactly got the three-tier thing going on but they definitely got a multi-tiered reality i think it is a bit three-tier got the snake going around a bit of whatever that is antiquitech <laughs> but yeah still a three-tier sort of i guess maybe two-tier with that thing going around cake trade with bridges or portals or rainbow bridges uh, to take you there so yeah um, the egyptians give you the canopy they got a similar idea the mayans got the similar idea the norse the koreans they have the upside down mount meru got the hindus they have a three-tier type of thing the navajo have the dome system um the hebrews also it is only only western theology bullshit western theology bertrand bertrand would have told you that is uh the white western world they go against all what the asians have told us about what the shape of this place is all they're the only ones that tell us this is the case so all hail geo is that geo shifter so welcome all i don't know many in chat we're just going to get on because i've got so much information to get through and it's all pretty juicy so have you ever wondered what the egyptians look like these are basically oh, Nahum portraits found on mummies in Nubia um, and southern Egypt and other parts of Egypt. And they show apparently from when Egypt, well, I don't know what kingdom, but the Phoenicians, you'll see that in a minute clearly, are up and running. And they have mummies or tomb coffin things with beautiful 
beautiful portraits which look photorealistic so we can see apparently what these you know these classical world beings before that major reset look like and they pretty much look not very mediterranean at all maybe this one he's got green eyes he's balding so that's unusual so apparently you know from the you know the ancient egyptians guys and here's the ladies who occupied ancient egypt they had finery and this is exactly what they're supposed to look like well that looks so photorealistic now that actually looks like a photo or a print or something yeah no she's a little bit cockeyed no offense to anybody in chat who may be cockeyed what's happening geo shifter my brother <laughs> can we get 300 thumbs up oh i'm all right i'm happy um is this cockeyedness going on no i used to think in the morning if i woke up and basically seen a cockeyed person before anyone else that i would have bad luck and it would be a shit day it's like fuck cockeyed lady why did i see her um but that must be just me anyway and you know the way reality works which i just explained to you so i would make that happen oh, i've had a shit day there was a cockeyed fucking woman this morning but yeah phoenicians you'd see the laurel leaf going on golden laurel leaf um but yeah they say that's parasitical um invasion is a cockeyed thing you see it with a lot of p famous people they got a bit of a cockeyed thing going on richard gavese for example he's a bit cockeyed isn't he in fact he looks a bit down syndrome not no offense to down syndrome they're lovely people i'm just saying that he you know he's definitely got a bit of the the mongols about him hasn't he richard gavese so um no offense if you yeah if you are a fan look at this and they cruel but yeah, they put these uh, magnificent faces on the fronts of these. Apparently thousands were burnt um, and destructed and they found a few in this site in Nubia where they were all still intact. They got beautiful look at the eyes, like sort of a green color, really nice. Uh, seems a bit chunky and they do these little cruel little baby paintings as well. Isn't that weird? Ultimately creepy. So this is what they were getting up to. It's a bit, um, you know, it's a bit Norman Bates they were doing back in antiquity. What's going on? Tch, thing with death, isn't it? They thought they had this thing going on, you know, sort of the judgment where your heart would be weighed up in front of this crocodile being. And if it was blackened by sins, it would weigh heavy because you were a sinner in this realm, which we are naturally inclined to do given the circumstances of this realm. Um, it would be chucked to this crocodile and it would be eaten in this uh, Egypt mythology. They believed in the afterlife, stocking up, ready for when they met the fairy man. Oh, they went to the afterworld like Parry Tutankham and had all that cool shit. You had some seeds to grow some stuff. That's Bacchus, by the way. <clears throat> in fact, I go as far as to say that was Bacchus too, who is in Egypt. This guy is i don't know what a deity with horns take a wild guess and they're holding vibrational sistrum up to him which will give a vibrational quality this is just beyond belief technology we'll talk a little bit about after this section because i'm going to talk about sacred geometry the antiquitech world or science of technasmia which is the science that these were using which is a science not used today it's the science of ether tech i think that this science of ether tech i think you can manifest that might be one use for the fashe set as a certain thing i think it would be like a replicator you get on star trek if it's on star trek they got in reality nothing is new under the sun and they tell us all in that program so yeah they ostentatious gold leaf really really weird looking one that one isn't he not human at all but look at akhenat and he's got head he's a, he's a cone head isn't he like um oh, he's barack obama as we all know and they have this tech going on on their head look wow 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 that is no way in a million years that's just a happy hat guys that's technology isn't it my cup will overflow of plop so yeah absolutely fucking brilliant sight look is this guy not a giant behind you can you see this little guy here who's a eunuch and he's giving him some grapes and there's unless he's really little i don't know but this guy looks like to be 
100% giant. Um, I'm getting your mummy. And why are they called mummies? Anyway, why are Egyptian dead called mummies? Have you thought about that? And we call our mummies mummies. Yeah, something going on there, I think, as well. And they, do you know they actually mummified millions and millions of their pets? Yeah, millions of pets. Some of them we, oh, God, look at this one. Oh, that's, that's weird. I've seen this boy before. I thought that was from Pompeii, but it's not. He's Egyptian. But he's a Phoenician. Oh, right. Okay. So, um, obviously, the um, Old World uh, New Kingdoms dynasties, uh, in my mind, are all bullshit for Egypt because they're all based on a bullshit narrative of the Rosetta Stone, aren't they? So it's, these pots again, that's a nice pot. But these clay pots here for the afterlife, an effigy, and he's still got some meat on him. Uh, this one in Wicca, it's got a really nice painting on there, it looks very lifelike. But aren't they fucking fabulous paintings? The effort, really, you know. Did, what I'm wondering is how did they capture the person post mortem? Because it may be a bit puffy and stuff, you know? So, <laughs> uh, depending on the death like so i'm just thinking did they take the pictures post you know before they died to capture their youth like because you know these are pretty youthful to be on fronts of coffins aren't they what did they die of exactly and why are they so photorealistic they're absolutely beautiful sumptuous but they're all phoenician no? a lot of leaves he looks really really sad Wow, this is some works just to put on coffins, aren't they, guys? Absolutely fabulous. So the Yayam, Yayman, or Yayam, excuse me, uh, mummies found in Nubia uh, some time ago. So let's think about sacred geometry. I've been thinking about these quite some time. Okay, the you know people are saying, oh well, these ceilings you get in the Indian world, you know, everywhere actually. You know, they're mind-blowing, but they're not just for decoration. They seem to be, you know, for a gadget. And you can't help noticing that this thing looks like a, a beam thing out of Flash Gordon, and these things look like beam things out of Flash Gordon. And I'm thinking, well, I wonder if you actually went or went into this place and it could manifest what you desired, like a manifesting pod. This is an absolutely beautiful uh, flower of life in the eye many people think that we're actually living in in the actual eye of god which is very very <laughs> very very possible in a way you know there are scriptures like saying we're in the dream of brahma and brahma wakes up you know but he, he sleeps for millions of culpas which are billions of years in as but row 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 you both down you join the stream guys so yeah, you get the flower of life in here and these beautiful geometric shapes in um, an ancient mosaic. So, you know, apparently classical world understood sacred geometry to a level that is missed today by a modern science. You know, they don't recreate in this level. Beautiful blues in that as well. So it means it doesn't just, it's not just decoration and aesthetic, you know, sensory thing going on. Uh, because of the the ge geometry itself, it interacts with the ether because of the geometric nature. This is how it works. Mm -hmm. And if they're made of stone and if it's giving off some sort of, I don't know, resonance or even some sort of radiation. Look at this. Ancient wood carving. Stable eight. The flower of life. So they un understand like advanced sciences. It's got four angels on that one. It's an interesting thing. This is from the Middle Era, and they just show you they understand the Platonic solids. They understand just crazy level of geometry, which is hidden in the architecture, as with the secrets. The secrets are hidden in the architecture. Look at this beautiful oculus in the ceiling. It's not a hole, though. It's just a, a painting which looks like it's uh, got some depth. But same old thing, the Phoenicians in the clouds, they got their peacock because it's basically i think a homunculus i created because of its perfection and weirdness because uh, seemingly they want perfection 
So I think that's a gadget. It looks like they're all pointing to uh, some sort of center, which is this bit, and some sort of beam. I don't know. I'm just thinking it can't be that technical, that intricate, not to do absolutely anything. And Venus is based on the flower of life. Look at that. Just in a stone world, they knew. So advanced. You see what I mean? It's just, okay, they're absolutely fantastic and mind-blowing to look at. But they do something. So, yeah, some people have suggested, um, like, oh, these look like rocket engines. It's not, excuse me, jet engines, the bottoms of them. Or some sort of engines, well, possibly. So look how advanced and intricate this is. Hmm? They wipe the floor with today in the ancient times, and this is the tech they hide in from us. Some of the buildings, they still got this technology. They still got this. So what does it do? so much in it so much in it and how did they do it how did they produce it well a couple of schools of thought with flat earth british one idea we had is if you had a, a pool of water underneath this this uh, ceiling and you put um, a wave function through it and then you could reflect that upon you maybe in a mirror image of um, that exact wave function on water or even a plate below doing a somatic experiment because these surely look like somatic experiments uh, results which they are the geometric shapes set at different frequencies set at different vibrations and resonation passages portals the internet is a portal i worked it out the internet's evil like the cursor of god but this cursor in our hand now this internet cursor curse is going to save everything it's not lost at sea it's not save our souls everything has changed that looks like it's a rock sort of a jet engine sort of affair excuse me and uh, strange geometric shapes in ceilings in churches look at this for intricateness so, yeah, indeed, I think they could not manifest it in the past. This wouldn't be on the bounds possibility because they show you in the film Captain Strange him using geometric shapes, which they call magic, to manifest, rip open portals, and travel about and do all sorts of stuff that they say is magic, but it's not. It's natural science. It's geometric. It's a science, which is antiquitech works on. For. So they're really beautiful. So these are interesting. I made some discoveries. I like looking in discovering new information sharing with you all so i don't know many of you are watching 905 of you and the guys on facebook on a tuesday night Super fantastic these are interesting and i'll tell you why they are interesting historical pieces <sighs> right what we're looking at here is the first porcelain plates ever produced in europe now, they say that the porcelain plates first arrived in China, 7th century, is what they say. Okay, guys. Uh, using the technique of hard porcelain. This technique here was devised by the Mad Itchy Medicis. The strange dynasty hailing out of Florence in around 1570 I-575 mark, the Medicis. Highly trippy. But they are definitely, probably all witches, yeah, definitely, and Phoenicians, which a lot of Phoenicians definitely are witches too, because it all goes hand in hand with their culture, doesn't it? So, uh, their cult. So, 1937 print, but look at this. They, the, the Medicis, 1570s, and they got an F and an Antiquitet building as their, um, as their mark. But, yeah, this, so this stuff precedes Delft. It's fine porcelain. They did have trouble with it in the manufacturing, I read. Um, but they'd nailed it. Completely Phoenician. They're actually amazing pieces. I can't imagine what a Medici piece must fetch in this in this realm. But you know, considering they're four hundred and odd years old, I can imagine quite a bit. But yeah, yeah. This was the first apparently post reset. Obviously not in the whole of reality. Bone China doesn't fare well in reset, so this is post reset. Phoenicians all over it. But wow. 
So, yeah, they nailed it. The Chinese nailed it before. Why porcelain? Because it resonates. It has resonation uh, qualities. This stuff, they use ceramics in the electrical industry for superconductors, capacitors, spark plug tops, and the rest. And porcelain, um, it's probably therapeutic to humans as well electromagnetic voltage so yeah there's a um, mad itchy himself he was a mad itchy that he couldn't scratch he. and here they all are yeah getting down to the mad itchy stuff which is basically what phoenicians get up to so it's just i don't really know cutting the mother because she's on the popping her clogs getting along with the uh stuff of the day Mr. Medici style. So that one's got a definite Chinese feel to it, but European, as I said, Italian. Italian. So, so yeah, they are Medici's. They're captured in a few Renaissance artworks. There's plenty of information about this spooky dynasty, but they were witches. And they got like these slaves carrying the same bowls in this Renaissance artwork as they have on display today. The exact same pieces, which I thought was really cool. So you can, you know, you can sort of compare them that they are actually authentic oh look where his hand is there that's a bit suggestive is this is is his head actually attached to his body okay now that's a bit full-on in it tooth could apologize later eh wow and here they are they are fantastic pieces strange demonic faces on them so if you've never seen a medici plate before you learned something today and they were the first in europe now phoenicians and the tavistock institute telling you everything was going down in contemporary music now i've read this before but I listened to it the other night and i thought oh fucking hell i started to get goose pimples because of everything we know and i i asked myself the same old question lee has as well is how can they possibly know all what we discovered organically and took years to discover it? You know what I mean? It's like they already know. Every single thing that we find out is already there. So Echoes, Pink Floyd. Now, it's a watery theme with the whole album. The album cover is a year hole or a year um, underwater, like hearing through waves but underwater. Now, I want to note something about P. Green okay now green it comes up a lot like peter green albatross p green p green boat in uh on the pussycrat uh p uh p the green sea in the yellow submarine Do you see this is this is repeating narrative of this green sea and i've used it in a, in a black sabbath track as well uh it was children children of the sea which also tells you what's going on. So overhead, the albatross hangs motionless upon the air and deep beneath the rolling waves in labyrinths and coral caves, the echo of a distant time comes willowing across the sand and everything is green and submarine. And no one showed us to the land and no one knows the where's or why's. But something stirs and something tries and something starts to climb towards the light. Hmm. Strangers passing in the street by chance two separate glances meet. And I am you and what I see is me. Do I take you by the hand and lead you through the land and help me understand the best I can? Oh, fucking hell. It's all, it's all in this, isn't it? And no one calls us to move on and no one forces down our eyes and no one speaks and no one tries and no one flies around the sun cloudless fuck me they tell you everything in that song so yeah there's plenty um pink floyd definite uh, never wrote their own lyrics this is handed to them at tavistock institute i'm definitely convinced of it 100 percent it's just they know too much. How can these people know, know this much? So now what we're going to look into now is fantastic mud flood. What i got coming up now, guys, but I'm going to come back to camera a second because 
want to shout a few of you so many of you watching just coming up to a thousand people and it's been an epic night so far but i had to make posts because basically i won't sleep <laughs> i can't sleep on this sort of information so yeah we got some fantastic stuff to come also up and coming so there you are good to see you all guys yay dick richards i'm so happy to see everybody 933 we're getting up to a thousand people if you all share this out now we'll have a super fantastic thousand people chat buzz um on a bog standard tuesday night where we find out that actually we can save humanity but we have to do it via saving god first which is an epic thing and an epic undertaking which i personally myself am willing to do <laughs> it sounds like a worthy cause to me yeah he fucked up we all fuck up he made evil we get rid of it kuching no more of any of it no more wars no more corruption no more of their absolute bullshittery because everything would have to change everything would have to be new again so where are we up to so far flat with british martin oh, yeah it looks like they got salvage rights on this place whoever's outside that's a bit spiteful isn't it especially with us in here but we haven't been in here that long anyway we're only staying here for a short time then they kill everybody then they recycle it again next crowding yeah i know i know what you're thinking you're thinking what well, is that all reality is well before then they said that you were going to be working as a tax slave for your entire life <laughs> probably die of cancer or something really fucking miserable shitting yourself in an old age pension as well and then your family are going to get mugged after that was the reality you had before this ongoing reset you have the great fact of british think tank to thank for and after all of this utter fuckery is over with it's going to be a fantastic new reality don't worry too much about the mascovites they got what they fucking asking for is what i can see at this stage if then if they will not see if they see the truth and they will still carry on with their bullshittery we can't help them we have another higher uh, prize a higher goal here guys we have to just fuck them at this stage of the game you know what is it with these fucking people you know they they know these don't work it's just absolute insanity to think the only thing it sells you is is um the you know the illusion of safety with the gaps you can smell a fart they don't work squirt stuff through them it's just ridiculous but yet they still wear them around their chins and walk around what why don't you just take the fucking thing off and not only that they're going to look really fucking stupid having a mask a tan a mask a tan a tan this year right when it gets boiling hot with another mask on it's going to be all white here and it's going to be all brown here they're going to look really really stupid anyway that's me having a little rant but you know it is in the middle of pandemic and this stuff is getting you know a lot of people guys you know they're, they're, they're really really struggling we've been locked in for months and months and now they're saying oh we're going to drip feed you this and that you can go and buy fucking woolly jumpers or what have you retail and all of that it's just everything that they're offering to give everybody is bullshit like the whole culture is just dependent on fucking alcohol and fucking corporates or, or just retail none of us give a fuck they're insane we don't want any of it fuck off already one one another we want to live here everybody have equal opportunity together okay instead of just the privileged silver spoon fuckers having it all and everybody else having it all stacked against them there will be none of that it needs to be balanced it needs to be fair for everybody so everybody and, and not like in school being fucking brainwashed with a control mechanism as a phoenicians and what's person's really good at and then you nurture that and then it can be super fantastic or whatever they really are good and super fantastic of instead of stifling that and just brainwashing them into being something that they're not which is what they do which is a really big crime don't you think how many of us have actually been robbed by like that from from the system from schools and education systems you know what we could have been what our dreams were they just nah no you can't do that it's like i, I used to tell them to fuck off and i used to as well and I was right, and everything I said that I would do, I did. He said, well, what are you going to do when you grow up, Matt? I said, I'm going to join the Merchant Navy and travel the world and do something completely different. Yeah, whatever, Matt. 
So I, and I did exactly that. So I didn't do anything in school that I, you know, didn't say anything that I actually didn't do, to be honest with you. So yeah, welcome, 900 odd of you. So I got amazing mud flood evidence. So crazy is this, is we've caught captured in films. Now I guess a lot of stuff from Scandinavia of Sevran. So I thank Sevran, I picked these up in a photo drop um, a little while ago and I've just been saving them there to present. And what they will show you is, so a late Victorian era, they had really good quality photographs, but they're actually digging the mud out at that period. And I've never seen anything like these. I've never seen anything like these. These are probably the best I've seen. So they killed all your trees, QS, and nothing pisses me off than a tree murderer. Really, nothing. Okay, if you've got a big tree there and somebody comes along and tries chopping that fucking tree down, yeah, chop you down. Leave the fucking tree alone. Wow, that's just murder trees, absolutely wicked. See that guy there? Yeah, Geo Shifter, loves Geo Shifter. He's one of my best mates. We go back, we go back to the old Flat Earth days, Dragon Sage, where we used to do 24 hour FETV. That was five, six years ago. A lot of you will not remember that. Jenny, who's loving the mists, good to see you, lady here. And I am Pierre. Yeah. Uh, we don't. Do you know anyone's done talk to me about Rona or have you seen so and so's video? I'll just make myself clear now, right? I don't have time to watch any videos. If I do treat myself as to be like UAPs or Campbell's or, or a John video, um, and then I watch like the odd movie to pull it apart for, you know, social engineering, <laughs> predictive programming, etc. But apart from that, um, I have got time. I haven't got time. I, none of this would happen if I just sat there watching videos. Not that I want to, anyway, because after what comes out on Flat of British, finds it all incidental bullshit. <clears throat> Wishy washy, just can't, no juice, can't, just nothing for, for me after going in, you know, to this truth, to this level, this deep. <laughs> nothing else touches it, does it? So, Lenny, oh, hiya, Lenny. You look nice. Good to see you. Theo, Glenn. And Esther Malone's cool name, nice nice, like Bugsy Malone, Alan, and Joy to the World, Love, Truth, Love, and Life. I like that. That's a nice name. RT, who's got a cow on oh, no, Avatar, uh, Blue Sky. Ooh, don't worry about all that blue sky. Let's lift yourself up, not worry so much about all of these things like invisible parasites that bugs or germs or things that they tell you are in reality because the truth is it's all bullshit everybody listens to everyone else i'm being really distracted by a bunny rabbit at this moment in time it's just been trying to chew my ethernet cable so there's another clue isn't it ethernet the ether net uh, uh, uh. yeah i know so Squirrel Sniper, Mrs. Tree, son of Overlook, good to see you, my brother. And uh, it's your Fatima as well. I have, I have Fatima, lovely. Good to see you. And Space Drum is here. I would forgive the name. Uh, Brown, don't do space on Flight of British and Flight of uh, Space is Water. Uh, Margaret Walker, Walter, Alien Zoo, Hippie, Shake Goose Trees, uh, Robert Hector. Good, good day to you, Sir, Sir Robert Hector. Uh, flat fact and Canada me and Brian Burdak. Burdak, Brian. Alex. And I don't know what that means. What how am I supposed to say that? How am I supposed to say that? Line, 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 vertical. Wet licked fucktad. Wet licked fucktad. I don't know what that is. Um, Masky. But if, if, he, if he does slag anybody off, or even me off, and I got it wrong, like you twat him with a blue blue um, wrench thing. That's what they're there for. Fuck, don't have any fucking mercy. No mercy. Fuck that shit. Thought I banned a troll earlier and I did it with pleasure. Made me smile. But he was just a real twat. You know, it's like, you're gone. That's what I like about uh, trolls as well. They think they're actually being seen when they're speaking, but no one sees them. And they're just like, mean, they're like, nothing. <laughs> so it's awesome. So yeah, I relish it now. Yeah. Kick a troll's head in, nothing better. Mish, good to see you. And Valiant Bull, lovely to see you too. So I'm going to carry on. Okay, showing some stuff. Dick Richards, did I say you? Yeah, I did. And Lindsay Ashcroft. Good to see you, love. And love. 
who's love it's got a brilliant uh, lovely name thought that well out poor see poor justin scott justin scott roma roma i'm from a bit mel it's not actually there oh, oh look who it is alex Orton magic i haven't seen you for the time of memorial has your martin near playing lifted up <laughs> what the the wings on my flat yeah i don't know i was surmising earlier ways if if you could survive a flood and i was wondering if you could just get a, like a big carrier bag so i put the handles and the amps okay so like if a 10 mile wave come in or something you, you could like it lift you up you'd be buoyant and what's more you could pull it over your head and you'd have like a little diving bell inside this you know carrier bag and it'd be under your arm so i think that would work so obviously my flat is not waterproof i could try some magic and hermetically seal this flat so that it would be safe in water so it didn't you know leak and you'd be great you can just look out the window and there'd be all sharks and fishes going by which would be pretty neat especially mermaids um so i just fuck off on a wild mad fantasy about flood day <laughs> i did <laughs> i'll stop that sorry guys esther good to see you joey and everybody i am human and anyone else I missed, I'm very sorry. Good to see Joe Shift to you, my friend. And the other Mel, good to see you here. And Tom Tom. I was listening to some Tom Tom Club the other day, where have you rapping it? Really good band they are. So, dun, dun, dun. I was reminiscing the 80s. Okay. Now, we're going to look at this strange Antarctica base, or excuse me, this Greenland base. We're going to follow some roads in a little while. But first, we're going to have a look at Mud Flood. If you're unaware of Mud Flood, I will show you, um, at some stage, I'm going to have to do a chronology on all this, but I'm going to show you the devastation and the fact that Mud Floods happen over and over. I'll show you a first one at the moment. Uh, from a book from early Romage, which is um, fantastic. I don't know what's going on with this bookage, but it gives you what I would say is somebody seeing and engraving exactly what they've seen. Okay, so it's between 1715 and 1819. So the year after, or a couple of years after, what was full reset. So we know from um, the noble... Uh, the floods of the noble city of Rome, that Rome was inundated with water sometime in the 1600s along with America. This is probably um, a latter second Noah's flood affair. Um, and it left it thick in gloopy mud. Now, what he does show you is no doubt in my, in my mind that this is, you know, mud. And it's burying everything, which we know uh, got taken out by um, the 1930s uh, by Mussolini. So that's supposed to be the Parthenon there. So he's, he's, he's engraving or he's doing these mud flood pictures. And he's doing what he's seeing. But, you know, there's some crazy stuff showing up. And, like, you know, all right, that's there. We know that's there. So St. Angelo uh, Castle, etc., etc. We know these things, Sistine Chapel, etc. Bah, bah, bah. They're a bit crude, some of them. But he shows the mud really far up. Look, this is the star fort of the Vatican, right? And the mud is halfway up. Big hills hills of mud. Uh, that's the top of the Spanish steps. And looking down to the Colosseum. Some people say to think that the Colosseum was the bottom of uh, the Tower of Babel because it's, re you know, it's resemblance to some of the artworks of the uh, Tower of Babel. But I think it's more inclined to be a water tower. So um, what this building is above the Colosseum, I don't know. It's not there in modern day. So it's gone since then. But yeah, inundated in mud and they have cut a giant in you. And I'm not sure what's going on with the giants. It's, all right, all of that's there, the classical world, deep in sludgy mud. And then you get this, uh, there's the Tiber, still there. The classical world completely smashed from when this place maybe turned upside down. But look at it. Ridiculous amount of mud. And uh, look how high it is as well. Just and you can see it's all like just big gloops of uh just mud in these pictures. But you get this. So is that actually there, this antler man? Probably it's just a statue, but it's huge. They're looking at it. So uh, you know, at this stage I'd say they just come back into Rome, you know, after that that, that event. I think they've had a mud flood since as well. So yeah, he's definitely 
engraving what he's seeing. So he's seeing that, is he, on a mud flood path coming out of Rome? Or did he just add it for interesting decoration? Huh? And what is this? Is this a satellite dish? I don't know. It's just a weird thing on the uh, on the column. But again, they're pointing. Look, look at this magnificent giant. There's a giant sort of laying down as well. So why is that being depicted in Rome when he's everything else actually exists? Look, this is like, you know, we know that's there. We know this is there. Although it's in sludgy mud. All of it. You see, just mountains and hills of mudded Rome. So I'll bring you up a little bit more into the current day. These are fantastic. These are these are from old Oslo and other cities in uh, in Norway, basically. So um, I downloaded basically the best ones off of uh, my folk drop that I could. Um, but these, look, this is a little antent antiquitec thing. I wonder what it actually does. But you want mud. So in this. What you'll see is it seems to come in from one direction, the mud. It's coming, you know, this way. I'd say that these buildings are probably a lot lower. Comes in down this hill. They can't even be bothered digging it, you know, down this way to clear the windows. They just, they just left it. They just left it and just paved over this this muddy incline. See, the, the windows just covered half with this, with this mud that's come in and they've just paved over. It's ridiculous. In fact, look at the... Pickledy pickledy nature of all of this, where the door is, and the, the path that leads into this makeshift temporary later door, no doubt about it, is all mud. And it's mud going up to it, and it's got a little wooden retainer, and everything else is in mud. It's just wow. And then you get um, a lot of these uh, sort of architectures in our mall. So it's got like amazing Tatarian buildings you'll, uh, and Phoenician buildings, you'll see. But, Nothing is uh, seen to be unaffected. You've got like, you know, a couple of inches off the road there, off the pavement, and then they're digging the mud out. So in the narrative, I can't see anything concerning too much to do with construction. I haven't seen any building going down, just a load of people removing what looks like a shitload of mud, um, all below street level. And yeah, so some sort of, um, some of, you know, Norway does have mud floods as well, guys, but what is exposing under this mud is an old older wall you see this quite a bit in uh also it seems to be on top of a much older civilization but look at this for mud oh wow ka -ching. oh wow it's just like oh just cut it away there there's not even long ago so by the look of that one mud flooded holy shit ski you wouldn't architecturally do that. That's just nuts. You're building a fall over. Oh, wow. Oh, well, this one. What do you think this is on top of this building and this year, guys? This big round thing with that. It's not a chimney, is it? You know, all these tunnels. Everything in this city of Oslo, um, or whatever cities they, they show. I'm not sure, Bergen, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Stavanger, I can't tell. Um, they're all Phoenician. But they put a little bit of cobble in here, muddied mostly. But you can see how it's all come in, and the, the literally the building's down below the ground level. Just, just insanity. Is that an aerial? Oh, they got an aerial as well. It's not a flagpole. They got an aerial. Can you see that? No, that's for radio. Maybe they would have had radio nineteen hundred, would they? No, they wouldn't have. I can't work out what that is. Maybe it's a fountain of some sort. Got like a little portal uh, antiquitech thing there but i can't tell what that is looks like it might be a water feature or something don't know but as you can see um, when they move all the mud underneath is these old tops of arches etc terrible uh, blurry image i'm sorry but in some of the streets the mud has stopped dead you can see down here the windows well, mud is literally finished there it's come carried on so they like when they come in after the reset yeah when they're doing salvage ship rights they get the pavements they put it up that's enough that's enough we don't need to go no further we leave all the mud there so they've just cleared out like a lot of this street but only that much it's just insanity look at it and uh you know so what you get all over Christendom, as we all know by now, is these doors sunken into the ground because the mud's come in. 
and they just put a retainer and, and the classical world as such red brick world tunnels everything underneath so oslo another city 1800s I think 1860s or something and later as well uh, got destroyed and a lot of his public buildings also destroyed by fire like that so it's a replicating story the size of that ladder whoever would go to the top of that looks like they were suff suffering with window taxation there as well so yeah a lot of his civic buildings have been torched they had a giant city fire as well um as you'd expect so i guess in that frosty mud but you can see it's all coming in so yeah um what circumstances mud flood well like i said a fascist type technology could burn a hole in a cliff side it can turn things to dust depending on the setting um if it causes a vibrational quality which will make like a cymatic experiment affair then all of the lands will turn to just putty and it will look like somatic patterns probably for a little while it will peak it will trough um i think these are probably for dye or walls or something they're under the streets that's another question the dying it's a curious name for the dying for these clothes the squillions of tons of not easy to get old of dye for these clothes that are all over christendom there's a big question with these clothes you know guys the manufacturer of them all in fact there's a big question with it all with all of its manufacture of all of these resets big questions the glass the metal so as you can see here below ground level in norway in oslo is this ancient classical world venetian world so um it was called uh christemia in the past it was a beautiful tatarian city and looked like it was quite effluent too so it was really well to do so that's a stereoscopic image but it actually shows nothing under this church except for mud and uh what looks like just ruins you see the mud sort of coming in this way on this window and it's just like a little hill of mud I think that's a mud flood photo, but it's so old that it's obscured. Again, with a mud flood, check these aerial here. One, two, three, four. And uh, this large, massive tiers of uh, mud. And all of the buildings are mud flood affected. So it's just what you find in a lot of cities, including Cardiff, is they just let the hills on the sides of the cities. I noticed there's so many cities, Nottingham look the same, and uh, Belfast had the same thing where. It was only necessary to you know sort of dig the city itself out and then just leave these sloping woods and everything going up to the city i think a lot of cities you know exhibit this but check that corner building up i don't know what this is it, looks like it might be an electrical generator <laughs> and look at this the mud came in that way could half buried that window there buried half buried half buried carries on going strange little church strange little building there isn't another shot maybe a little time later and they always do these like weird dome things here yeah, but not domes what are they i don't know monsters i don't know they got one in a local pub near to me i don't know what they represent and what the space would be for inside because it's not that aesthetically pleasing it must be for something but yeah chronically mud flooded mud still there in fact the mud's there and grass such a beautiful building left in mud and grass well 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 so that was taken that photo in 57 well we've all seen them by now that sort of thing in our own cities and uh, the removal look at this this is classical world greco-romano columns going really really deep here and look at this it's like 30 foot of mud everywhere no sign of building going down it's a little trestle there but there's nothing going on just just mud depression and mud here also that's the same photo as earlier excuse me again just came down the hill buried the windows just leave it there this doesn't even look like it's long after does it look, it's half over the windows there but they got some like i said in the center fine architecture to me you see this column here this pillar that looks like it's the top of a pillar in fact this looks like it's like going a lot lot lower wouldn't you wouldn't you agree and also you know this this arch it's well it's not balanced is it and it's not fitting symmetry so it's disproportionate so it obviously dictates that this thing goes a lot lower it's my psyche that's the case okay and obviously down here 
windows, windows. And um, again, look, they just left the mud there, 30 foot above these houses or more, and just scrape away, just scrape away. This is what they're doing in all of these cities. But I tell you what, the interior of some of these houses, these Phoenicians, absolutely fantastic. They got some money in Oslo. So, um, yeah, they have these beautiful ships hanging up. Look, it's got to be everything to do with ship, worship or worship, as we talked about in this post. And again, removal of a shitload of mud. These churches, they look it's very Tatarian. That one looks Italian. That one looks Tatarian. Okay. So I'm wondering what's going on with this guy. So he looks like he's an elite. He's got hand, you know, hand in the pocket thing going down. But um, is he literally that tall? Or is that column really short? Because that he's like, if he's six foot, that's only six foot height. Which is pretty crummy, isn't it? For a port, you know, a... Uh, way into a house because you're over six foot you're gonna bang your head I'm just saying and uh, they got canals which i've talked about being channels um and they did exactly the same in my city of cad if they filled them all in with rubble and they got rid of them and i think there's a clue i think these canals were not just you know for badges etc i think they were essential to part of the grid network of this place and all canals are surrounded by these massive warehouses and um, they're all mud flooded show you mud flood all of them so look at this place. This is crazy. I love this. First thing I noticed when I looked at it, I thought, oh, shit, it's a ship. <laughs> it is a ship, all right. It's got the, you know, the mast. It's the shape of a ship. And it's even got, like, the bridge as well. You know, like the captain has the captain's quarters. So a definite Phoenician house, mud flooded. But, uh, yeah, it looks like a ship to me. Oh, thank you, Scotty Wadles. That's really, really kind. Hey, Jilly. Hey, hey, Dar hey Cycle Dave. And everybody in chat. Oh, yeah, door in the air, all the windows below ground level. And they're nice, crispy, clean photographs, these as well. So these are the people who occupied this beautiful city at some stage in the past. Looks to be not cold at all. Maybe she's a little bit chilly, I'm not sure. But they dress in this sort of masses of masses of material. Not so much her, though. Just quite modern looking in her face. And, um... We see these all over, don't we? How many times have we seen these guys where they have this, the seashell and the empty, um, whatever it is, the empty feature with nothing in it, which is something's been removed. Statue, a Phoenician statue. So there's the mud in place. Just cut away, cleared from the road. And it's gone off a little bit solidified, but it's still very much in place. Ooh, that's a nice one. Look at that. <laughs> They put railings and cleared the windows, but uh, there looks like a lot of the mud there. Uh, it's a muddy road, but they have tarmac it. They have put tarmac. And that is a clear, like, they didn't even bother getting the mud out of this one. They could have dug all of this out another 10 foot, yeah, with a bit of an effort, and cleared this span, and they could have cleared this year, but they know. Easier, we'll save the 50 ton or whatever it is, hundreds of tons of mud, and we'll just put the window that was there before, which got exactly the same tops over the door as it has the window. So we'll just rip the window up, put a door in a couple of steps, it saves us pulling out all our thousands of tons of mud or whatever. And it's got an aerial as well, which is not supposed to exist in the 1800s. And this couple showing in the background nothing but mud. And some Tatarian hillage uh, houses, beautiful houses. So here it is in the center, crapped out with technology, some sort of wire, uh, dome, aerials. This one's absolutely saturated in aerials, but it looks to be the time of the early motor car there, a little bit later. I was wondering about this. I was thinking, yeah, all right, they do, they're a monumental masons and they do gravestones for deados. Good news, good news. But, you know, this one goes straight up into there. So they're pulling the stones up into that window. What? Uh, uh, a gravestone made of stone. Are you tripping? That would be fucking so hard. But it looks like they might be doing it. Lads are up to you. Never take the weight on that roof. You'd fall straight through. So that was a mystery. You notice how much. <laughs> How much I spend on these photographs, scrutinizing them, guys. So, yeah, these are some of the ceilings in these beautiful Oslo houses. What I found fa fascinating is they do Phoenician deities, Greek, if you like, or Roman, whatever they're called, and they do um, 
Oh, the Vedas. They have um, like a, a Shiva. They have a Shiva there. And this strange thing in the middle. So, yeah, different... Um, basically, different religions there. I thought that was fantastic. Look at this corner building, though. I wouldn't hazard a guess at what that could be. It was a really interesting-looking build, isn't it? Really like that. So, yeah, beautiful city. That looks messed up. Top of a door there. Wow, look at this thing. Oh, that, that has got to be put uh, from before the reset. And look at the ceilings in these places. Yeah, I noticed they do a lot of um, ceiling work, the Phoenicians, and some of the stately, you know, the big houses in my city and others I've been to, London, Bristol, places like that. they got fantastic uh, ceiling decoration and uh, coving and stuff, and they always do that same Phoenician decoration. I never noticed it before. Now I've noticed it, though. So doors going down below ground level there. It's a nice little picture, isn't it? That doesn't look altogether unpleasant with its, uh, what are they called? Spiral staircase. <laughs> I think I lived somewhere exactly like that in a previous life. Yeah, this site it was, something like that. I remember, you know, it was a recurring dream I used to have, and it was like 1700s hats on and stuff like that. And, um, big, like, railway sleeper floor wood, like really, really thick wood on the floor, I remember that dream anyway so yeah that one's out in the ordinary just stuck there can't imagine what that is but it's never did and this technology in one of their warehouses or whatever this place is i don't know what they are don't know what they are can't even imagine they look like something out of doctor who maybe it's a heater with that chimney possibly check that out overkill on the antiquitech check that out Crazy, crazy, beautiful looking building. Love that. Yeah, lovely in Scandinavia. Yeah, it is from a different perspective. Looks to be smoke coming off it. Not no vanilla sky, that's smoke. A lot of wires coming off of it. Stacks. What is this building? Hmm. Don't speak Norwegian, fortunately. Oh, this one's beautiful. You've got the end building here. It's, it's half buried. This thing's immense, isn't it? This building. Artworks up there. Definite Phoenicians. Massive chunk of granity stone. And they're theatres. Owl theatres. This could be replicated anywhere in the world. Same style. Seashells. Domage. Mud flooded. Older world. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Look at all these photographs. And they're beautiful quality, aren't they? Wow. Time traveling through the eyes of Flat Earth British. And this is below ground level, obviously. They've dug the mud out. And there's all of these a door going through. And what looks like vaulted ceilings for what was going on underground. And these are Oslo vaults. I think this is the top of a pillar. And I think this filled with mud. And then they've just put some sort of shitty, crazy paving over it or something since. But this definitely looks like it's the top of a pillar. Because I have seen these vaults going infinitely deep, guys. I really do think. This would have filled up with mud at some stage. And this is a lot lower, is what I think. Because, again, it's disproportionate. Why would you build certain, such an acute arch for something so low? Can you see what I'm saying? Yeah, right. So it's the top of something a lot deeper, isn't it? That's the way my, my brain works. Like that. Right, so just as less acute, uh, more acute there. And you get it deeper, which is what you'd expect. It's what, you know, your architectural mind's eye sees. If that's the even a thing. That's what my mind sees. Anyway, so yeah, they've had destruction in Oslo, uh, buildings burning. But look at that beautiful building. Look, one kid sat outside looking like arms crossed, mud still in situ, nothing going on, and it's a mud flutter. And again, with the windows blocked off. Kind of had the same British window tax. Yeah, this is, must be the Norwegian Parliament or the royal family live here or something, guys, because they got exactly the same return though, as they got like in Windsor Castle. This is like um like a Norman affair, same sort of thing. Yeah, in Oslo. So all replicated. And here's some of the ver venerous on the ceilings of the elites of no way. Oh, that's a nice scene. I, I, I hear a lot of you still got snow and the second winter coming, etc. 
this is interesting. They got a massive Greco Romano arch with statues here, and this buried or half buried arch, and it goes into nowhere. Look, this goes into a wall. I'm not sure if there's tombs in here or something, and this is the entrance. Seems a bit weird. Uh, yeah, crazy little shot there. Crazy little shot. Check this for mud flood. Okay, so there's a Tetanasmia port there, two blocked off, loads of stuff going on anomalous, except for the pins that are going straight through the floors to the other side of the building, which holding it together because it's that old. And the same affair down here. So they've taken the time to do that. And then down here, look at this. This craziness. Craziness going on. All right, let's have a look at these Norwegians, all dressed in the similar clothes of the San Francisco people in 1906. Bland. Somebody said to me, you're only seeing them in black and white. No, 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 no. We've got plenty of color images. These clothes are bland. Okay, no one's wearing pale blues or any other fucking colors. They are all grays, blacks. I don't even see, do you see your tan? You don't see many tan in that era. It's all just the same color, same dyes. So, yeah, they, they knew about organ tech. We're going to talk about organ tech in a little while on our barbaria section. Anyway, I'm going to keep it together. Don't worry. It's this time, guys. Uh, as long as I'm not reading anything like the owl and the pussycat, again, I'll be absolutely fine. So it looks like there's somebody in there. Little soul there. And uh, digging the mud out. Looks a real mess, Oslo, at this stage. Compared to some of the architecture, compared to the state of the rest of it. So a little Norwegian kid waving a Norwegian flag. Nationalism's no good. Right, she seems a sprightly character. She looks like she's strutting along down that late Victorian Oslo Street. She's got a spring in her step. She's got a bit of an attitude on her face, though. But she's in, she's just getting on with business. What about these two? These look nice. Okay, where are you going, ladies? It's got the umbrella. Why? Got the umbrella. Why? It's not raining. Can't be that hot. It's fucking Norway. What, is he scorching? You covered up, love. You've got a hat on. You've got your arms. Oh, I don't know. Isn't it weird how they're covering up? Was, this, was the sun rays that harmful? Why would they have the umbrellas? If you're wondering what this big uh, thing is behind, it's for the, uh, the electric tram I have found. Oh, some ladies. Ladies. Look at this guy. He looks really interesting, don't you? I can imagine him in his Norwegian accent with his book he looks all clever he's got a feel of the toulouse the treks going on about him though although he's tall but i don't know must be that weird hips of his or something hmm. yeah it's nobody about a couple of cards down there must be early in the morning or everybody's dead and there's that building again they left the mud in it looks like a ship i mean they really left it in guys they left all the shit in i never removed it oh uh, yeah crazy good ship that like a Chinese ship, even. And more really good mud flutter. Yeah, they're really good. Look at that building. Don't even know what's going on with this one. Never seen anything quite like it. But the mud's there. And they got like, just built on top of the mud and dig a bit away. And then the road's out. Everything else is below ground levels. Absolutely crazy. Look, they couldn't even be bothered. Oh, oh it's just mental. And what's that aerial up there? Hmm. And what's that hole in there do? Mm. These are questions later for God. Now. Okay. She's skinning up. I don't know what she's doing. She's got real bad bags, or is it just the black and white thing going on? Maybe you've got a hard life. Is that lady got her eyes all blacked out like a Native American Indian? Hiawatha. Or is it just the shade? I don't know. Anyway, she's dressed nice. Nice bit of black lace going on. You okay, know, a lot of uh, culture going on in this place. But again, with the Hindu gods, what's going on? America. Look at this, guys. We've got America, and you've got a Phoenician with the shells. Jugs out. You've got um, an Asian one there. Oh, damn, I can't see the other ones. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't see that the last time I looked. Ah, uh, uh, I'm more Indian as well. So they've really got an international feel about them. There's the American one. Look at that. Sat on a crocodile. Ah, that's interesting. Coolio. What we got here? Can't really tell, but really beautiful. This one is... Ooh, 
Hims Ilios. Hims Ilios. Uh, I can't think what Brian's gone. Uh, again, with the Phoenicians, Horn of Life, everything. They just, people you already talk about, no. What about this one? This confused me. I thought, are these trees and they've got no leaves on top or are these just all crazy aerials? Somebody tell me. <laughs> Honestly, guys, they can't be trees. Look, there's loads there. There's one up there, one up there, one up there. These look like they might be trees. But then you've got like these. Are they trees with the tops chopped off and just the trunks left on? It's all a bit weird to me. Anyway. Move on. So this is the Overlook Hotel in Colorado where the movie The Shining was filmed. Here's where uh, Jack Nicholson came up in his Volkswagen Beetle with his family. Nah, it's not. <laughs> nice nah, Oslo. Looks exactly like the Overlook, doesn't it? Look at the tech on this thing. So yeah, it's funny how they all look the same, isn't it? These, that's exactly like the Overlook. And it's, yeah, it's in a completely different continent. Contain so i'm not sure if at some stage this would have been a radium heater i'm just wondering about the effects on the air on the wood and the ceiling was something emanating that, that much heat but my answer got answered on this photograph because this beautiful heater has cooked the wall behind cooked the wall behind but that doesn't mean to say it's not radium that's still radiating heat and look at its main building <gasps> wow so that's the most fantastic stuff, I'm guessing. Look at the uh, vaulting below, giving it mud proofing. <sighs> juicy, juicy, juicy. So, yeah, look at that heater. Went straight into the wall there. That's interesting. But I'm guessing it gets cold, they have snow. So they don't have coal fires per se. They have these big, I'm guessing, wood heaters or hill burners. Difficult to say. Ah, well, they had some good shit. So that's in Oslo, a saloon. So they had the library, the saloon, maids came in with a tray of tea and all of that fine stuff going on for the Victorians. But like I said, they had a lot of destruction in this city. That's 1906, I think it says. And electricery. And that looks like it might be a Jewish synagogue, um, but they got like a flashy stars going on and very Christmassy. <laughs> um, and they got electric. Coming on, I couldn't tell you the date. So there's more underground age as well, you know, ground level. And look at this. What do you think this is? So it's a street full of mud or mud flood. There's not too much effort to get the mud out. Still mud in place. What about that? That's left over from the other world. Is it a light? Is it a policeman's box for Officer Dibble? Is it um what a payphone? Do you see my problem? There's no wires coming off it, but that's got tech. So I can't work out what that is. Answers on a postcard. FEB box. I haven't got an FEB box, but just comment. And they do they do have a load of generators and electricery at this, at this uh, city. A nice little control panel. A lot of electricity going down. 936 of you watching. Super fantastic. TARDIS. What do you think they could get in there, Mel? Open the door. And then get out and you're on Broadway, New York City. See that? It's what? It's just so out of place. It's just like there's nothing going on. There's no path up to it. There's not even a path on the other side. This is all world technology left over, me thinketh. But they let you know who's taken over and the information is taken off of these strange panels, which you still have no real answer for, if I'm honest with you. If you're going to have a photograph done, get the boat in. Just quite dark for a Norwegian. I get the boat in. Like I say, you get a lot of destruction. I only downloaded this because it has a ladder in it. I thought, ooh, the old ladderine. So we had a ladderine overdose the last video. I think this fire looks fake ass shit for some reason. Do you? I think it's the parliament or something on fire. And um, I think they're fake ass fires. It doesn't even look like that's even happening. Oh, it's this, this theatre, this rotunda. No one around, no one outside, no firemen. Some children watching the fire go down, the roof burn off. There's a ladder. The ladder going up onto the roof. But uh, yeah, really, really weird photograph, huh? What do you make of it? 
So look at this thing going on though. This is a real flavour of uh, Tataria. New trees, 25, 30 years old down there. These things. Look at the tech on that. Tick with tech boobs. Oh, it would have been beautiful to walk around here and spoilt in the past. Ding, ding. Off the tram. Gives you enough time to get out of the way so you don't get splattered. Because they go at quite a speed, you know. I don't know what that is on the corner. He's scratching his head. He's got lost. God, he looks pure New Egypt. And you can't even see him. He looks miles away. But he looks like Tintin. Look at that door. I know Tintin's not no agent, don't tell me. Belgian, I think. I don't know. Cost twice in one week I've mentioned Tintin. I used to like Tintin, though it is good. And Thompson twins are named after Tintin as well. And Captain Haddock. Cool. So yeah, some sort of plant on the corner. Don't know what it is. And then below the ground level where they're doing some sort of I don't even know, it exposed the tops of an older wall. So there was a wall there. And the wall there, below ground level of the what they call classical world. In this factory, Brian Splattage, they couldn't even be bothered. So what we got is some sort of cave entrance and what looks like a load of mud. Um, up to what looks like a painted wall, but by your rock or mud that is solidified in the factory itself. So you can use your imagination what's going on with that. Yeah, I know, Roma. Yeah, it's, yes, uh, it's just weird. It's mud. You can see the back bit is the wall painted. Yeah? But this front bit is just the mud. They left it there. In the factory. Which looks like it's making jet engines. Which is really weird in itself. And, yeah, again. Look at these boards going over to the doors where there's just no, you know, infrastructure. You get this civilization up and running. You know, they've got apparently... You know, these, you know, if you go and do them, as, you know, benefit of the doubt and say these are an electrical advertising boards because, you know, they had electric and this one over here and they had like Cinzano Bianco, which is not happening. You know, this is ether technology. This is capturing the charge. And they got that technology, but they can put a pavement down on this, this strip, this street. It makes no sense. The old wooden ladder lean. And that's a really unusual building. I can't make out what's happening. Some sort of warehouse, maybe. So, yeah, they're super fantastic. Great, then. Look what you would have won. Oh, somebody come up on YouTube. I didn't switch it off. Very sorry. I thought I'd uh, muted my notification. So, I do apologize for that. Thank you very much. Comments go away now. Google. Now, yesterday, on my last post day before yesterday, this was shared to me, this Thula, Thula, like the Nazis Thula, or the Hidden Lands, or the Resicrucianists, etc. Base. And we was like, oh, what are they? They look sinister, and what's going on? And I thought, I'm going back there. I'm going back there. I'm going to have a look what's going on. Because what was bugging me the most is this is the very north of Antarctica. Firstly, okay, although the shadows are really long, which would... If this is on the, give me a second, this is on the north eastern coast, no, northwestern coast of Greenland, right in the far north. Uh, so it was um, west facing port, and the sun is coming in from this direction, very, very low indeed. Very low indeed. But interestingly, there's this shitload of cars, and I thought to myself, what? Up in the far north of fucking Greenland? There's no civilization up there. Who's building all this shit? Where's it all coming from? All right, you can deliver a load of it on um, on here. And there seems to be like one little town going on here. But the same token, I thought, where, where are they going? Where are these roads going? So what I decided to do is have a look. Let's look at the cars here as well. Cars, containers. I thought, fuck me. There's roads everywhere. Where are they going? So let's follow a road and see what, what happens, shall we? Because I followed a road just now. I followed earlier. This one going north was interesting. But the one going south, this one here, okay, it, it, it goes weird. It, it just, like, literally goes here and it disappears uh, into this, what appears to be 
this installation year with T's all over it. And then all of these roads going off. I thought, well, that's a dead end. All right, let's, let's try and find a road road because this is just not happening. I found one that wasn't the one and it went to some sort of like tunnel. I'm not even joking. It just fucking disappeared into the side of a fucking mountain. I'm like, what? Let's find out which road it was. Let's follow this northern road and see where this goes. This one here. See if it goes down to prominent here. And it disappears into this building here. Okay. Yeah, but one I just followed earlier. And it just went disappearing in the fucking mountain. It was just like gone. There. There. It disappeared into the side of a mountain. And, and um, the other roads do exactly the same. I'm thinking, what? Are they driving cars out of the sides of mountains and go into this base above ground? And I'm thinking about, you know, the Greenland movie. They've been pushing down our throats and the fact that we're in the middle of, you know, Armageddon. And um, I'm thinking to myself, wow, isn't it weird that they got all of these roads just leading to nowhere into just underground block end? They lead nowhere. Because I, so I wondered, I thought, well, where are they all going, these roads? Into the fucking wilderness. Let's follow this one. God, look at these roads. And they just go up to this, and this one here, and this one here, and this one here. What is going on up here? Block end. None of them go anywhere. These look to be underground. But they just don't go anywhere. Let's follow this road. See if it goes anywhere. Right, this is a di distinct road. We should be able to get somewhere on it. Okay, it goes off that way. Should we follow it south? I guess so. Okay, let's see if it gets actually going anywhere. Cause I can't imagine that in the far north of, of uh, Greenland, which is like North Poly, isn't it? Shit, where's this going? Right, Ziggy Zacked. We're on the road to nowhere. Oh my god, is Ziggy Zagged again? Where can you be going, road? Is that ancient? I thought it was ancient remnants, eh? Okay, come on, this is getting weird. It's all right, you take a right turn there. Looks like a few trees. And you disappear into nowhere. Well, wasn't that a long route to go absolutely nowhere, guys? Don't you find that weird and freaky? And every road I've gone from this installation is leading to it in the side of mountains. There's, there's tunnels and there's fucking axe. And this has got to be the centre for it, guys. And why wouldn't it be with the name Thula? You know, it's all like, you know, tied in with the, the Nazi mysteries and, you know, all the fucking anti, you know, the flying sources and all of the Admiral Bird narrative, you know. So, yeah, it's on the northwest coast of the island of Greenland. Thula Air Base, U.S. Army Base. Uh, Thula Antarctic Environment includes Iceberg at North Star Bay. It's really far north. Um, there's a lot of bullshit attached to it. American Aerospace Defense Command. Interesting little uh, logo they have there. United Space Space Force. So, see what I mean, guys? There's a load of fuckery going on here. None of this is real. Uh, 12 Space Warning Squadron, that's in case nukes come over and they're supposed to be like the dew line up there, I guess. A uh, Ballistic Early Warning System there as well. ICBMs, they can track. I said they were Minutemen, so I wasn't far off. And uh, 23rd Space Operation Squadrons. And what's the demon? What's with the demons? Fucking hell. And we know, we know, guys, that's absolute bullshit. So what's really going on in this place? they got a Loran station as well. What are they sonar in? What are they using uh, the, the radio navigation systems for? What is going on up there? So there's a lot of mystery going on in this place. Let's have a little look. Uh, some of the, the pictures. So there is, yes. There's the airstrip, yes. Oh, the many-headed Hydra. Hail Hydra. They just spit it in your face, don't they? And obviously it's a lot smaller. Thula AB, that's an interesting name, is located in Greenland. And there it is. It's quite big, isn't it? And all of them roads lead to sides of mountains for some fucking reason. Weird, that was. Weird. Really weird when I, saw it, when I found that last. I was like, what? 
I followed another road and it just disappeared into nowhere again. It's just crazy. So, yeah, this is thought, thought to be a mystical island, Thula, as well, guys, you know, like, uh, you know, like Friesland and, uh, I guess, Atlantis. So, yeah, the Aurora Borealis, Thula Air Base 2017, beautiful photograph. I've seen that myself once in Scotland. It's something to behold. And it is the, the electrified lights coming out of the North Pole hole don't you know and they got a vector on their air force space command bullshittery going on yeah <laughs> just like star trek exactly the same symbol which is science fiction tv program by the way <laughs> so yeah that was interesting now i'm going to come back for a second because we're going to have a little giggle in a second we're going to think about babarella psychedella and i'm going to basically try not to get my channel kicked off the internet I've only got this one left. So, still 959 of you watching. Did we go over a thousand? Usually, I got a couple of hundred people watching in um, Facebook. So, we'll just pretend, and I'm happy. So, flat thumbs. I will recap, and we will we'll basically um, after this next segment now, which is Barbarella, I will wind things up. I will be back in a day or three because you guys are going to need to catch up on the last two posts because Flat Earth British has been smashing up the posts this week just lately. But the information coming out of Flat Earth British, guys, you know, I can't sit on that information. I did not sleep last night. It just kept ringing through my mind. You know, I've got to safeguard, got to safeguard, to save humanity. I understand. I get it. I get it. It's all making sense at last, at last. I got this going through my mind. And I did eventually fall asleep and I had a weird then dream this morning. I seen Flat Earth British Lee in a dream. Okay, and I said to him, what the fuck have you done to my Brian? And he was laughing and chuckling, being his mental self. So that was weird in itself. But hey-ho, flat with Britishness. So you feel the same as you did when you started the show? I felt different last night. I felt everything had changed and shifted. It was just the, everything looked different, felt different. I can't even put it into words. It's just everything had changed just after. It's like God. It's the one in our help, and I haven't been able to be heard because everybody's too busy griping at him, which is, you know, us. And um, all the while, the answers were right there in uh, in plain sight. Just we couldn't see the wood for the trees. Now I'm starting to understand for the first time, I understand for the first time, what it is we're all supposed to be actually doing. And I guess it's the beginning of whatever this adventure is going to be i can't believe all of that has happened beforehand to bring it to this point just to get started he's blowing my fucking mind what can be next <sighs> just does me in. so amen hallelujah says um esther malone sweetness indeed donald is there snesney wipes <laughs> still gonna chuckle off the skinheads in a raft then you've got that in America land. Uh, it's wicked. We always say things like that, Daft. So, Elaine Lovell, good to see you, sweetness as well. Change your Alphabet Micro Reset. Exactly that, my friend. I'm not sure it'll give me uh, $10 supers there, but I do really appreciate that. Thanks very much. Son of Overlook, I've said. Jenny, I've said. Dutch Rebel, good to see you, Dutch. Walk one. And Donald again. Oh, Sonia Testament. Good to see you, Sonia. That matters. Michael. Brian. Brian with the epic Brian. Okay, and Glyph is here as well. Good to see you, my friend. So, I'm a giggle now. Not really. Yeah, maybe. We're going to think about the weird film Barbarella. I'll give you a little rundown because I don't want to read the narrative because basically I'm all out of reedy mode. Okay. It's <laughs> Barbarella. Okay, she's a space chick. It was played by uh, Jane Fonda. And she basically goes to a distant world because there's an, an evil doctor on there who's Duran Duran, okay? And he wants to ban um, sex on Earth and replace it with a sort of mind meld tablet association thing where you just go like, wah, 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 like that. Uh, so she goes there in yay protest to um, basically, I don't know if this is the actual narrative, but this is the better narrative that I like. <laughs> It might not be true. Anyway, she goes there and she has shit on this planet. But the thing is, she goes to this other planet because they say it's another world. But what it really is, is another world out that way. Because she meets an angel 
like angel who is blind as a bat blind angel and he's flying around how does he not fly into buildings or aerials or stuff it's really dangerous so i'm hoping he got sonar or some sort of angel abilities to be able to fly blind but it's an interesting got a blind angel and look, it's really rude as well this in fact this is disgusting i don't know what they were thinking in 1967 the year i was born by the way and it's quite frightening as well when i was young watching barbarella they got these evil dolls with metal teeth and 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 she gets like eaten by birds as well little birds budgies budgies biting a bum it's disgusting right but we're gonna have a look at <laughs> hello nicola good to see you dragon sage mud staff or mud flooded is your isabel is your martin ellen is your denise max is here as well all the gang is in almost a thousand of us for the fantastic mind-blowing <sighs> i'm glad i got all that over with so i can go sleep now tonight hopefully um Flat day, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday night. Can't even call it a flat day, can I? Oh, excuse me. Okay, so we need a round of applause. Oh, am I, is it running now? Thank you kindly. Yes, indeedy. Now, Babarella Psychedella. She's a girly, not a fella. We're going to take a look at um, Martin reminiscing and missing the 1970s because it was pretty fantastic. And Jane Fonda, so ka -ching. yeah. So, Barbarella Psychedella. She's a chick, not a fella. So she, she's here. So um, I guess the idea was turned on to me by Melich. She was like, why didn't you look into Barbarella, Matt? I was like, well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I will. A space chick, isn't it? So, oh, God, it's gone away. Give me a second. It's okay. And uh, we noticed the name was Barba and Ella also. Barba and Ella. I thought, oh, Barba and Ella. So there's a clue in itself. Barba, Ella, as in under my umbrella, Ella. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> Let me tell you something about this film, guys. Yeah, guys and gals. I grew up in a house with two narcissistic, psychopathic females. Yeah, yeah. Feel sorry for me. So when this film came on, a stupid o'clock. Yeah, you know, could come on after the Wizard of Oz Easter Day. Yeah, I used to have to sit with a pillow on my lap. I mean, this was real hell that they did to us poor teenage boys in the 1970s. That's disgusting, by the way. I'm really offended. Hide your eyes. Look away. Look away. <laughs> so anyway, Jay Fonda, I think we've established, I'm feeling comfortable to say, by looking at that photo, um, nothing's too disproportionate. Chin looks fine. She ain't a fella. So yeah, they killed her on the fashion. She has a lot of ray guns and stupid things going on. So the score is, she flies off to Italy, okay, because his film director, he's trying to, you said, I'll make you a super intergalactic chick. Um, we'll make a million, I'll make, I'll spend a million on a movie as long as you know, basically, I'm getting to your knickers later, which happens by the way. Just look at the way she's holding that gun. That's disgusting. Oh, I'm so offended. That looks terrible. Don't even want to look at that. It's all furry and stuff. Ugh. So there she is, Barbarella Psychedella. And there's this like really weird gauge or there she is she's looking right at you so this is how this is oh look at that that's disgusting she's got like all scratches on her legs and on her belly and stuff from when then birds tried to eat her oh this is just disgusting right I'm just really offended so what happens right is the evil um scientist like duran duran he's invented this like orgasmatron and the idea is right is it kills you from orgasms it's like hell but this woman's like an earth chick yeah so she basically burns out the orgasmatron they were absolutely disgusted with it and it is it's quite disgusting i think it's disgusting so um yeah they tried to torture her in um basically an orgasmic death and she basically orgasmed it out and blew it up here she is this is a very very um i don't know suggestive picture i feel <laughs> i love the chainmail bra epic touch epic so yeah this is the game angel he's saying i'm i'm not sure what i'm touching i'm blind definitely blind so that yeah that is really um 
got he's got eight wings, but like I said, he's blind. He's flying to a fucking tower block. He's stupid. But yeah, that's really rude. So yeah, she gets together with this guy who was a star in charge of Light Brigade. I can't remember his name. Shit, anyway. Um, elite. Um, and they have a go at this mind meld thing. And she's like, no, fuck that shit. She's like, what, what? No. No, what? Yeah, we have to try it. This is the way we do it in this world. So basically, this is it. She's trying to, she's like, well, I'm not so sure about this, you know. Do it the old-fashioned way. I'm an earth chick, you know, sort of thing going on. He's like, no, it'll be fantastic. He's sweating already. So basically, you've got to take a tablet, connect hands, and then wow, 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 wow. The rest is history. Okay. I thought he was blind. You better be fucking blind. Yeah. Like Stevie Wonder. You better be fucking blind, Stevie Wonder. Don't be letting us down now. She's like, oh, that looks interesting. Look, that's the Orgasmatron. It's designed to kill you. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they got epic baddies as well. They're like um, tin robot-y things. So, <sighs> So, yeah, they, oh, that's disgusting. Look away. <laughs> so they put it in this tube thing. I, I feel really hot. Uh, they put it in this tube thing where she's tortured. It's, it's horrible. Don't even watch the film. There it is. Oh, that's just disgusting. I'm not even looking. Oh, my God, that's terrible. There it is. So she gets into this orgasmatron. Yeah, it works. Orgasmatron works. Um, but she kills it because she's from Earth. Disgusting, I think. Yeah, yeah, she gets killed, um, nearly killed. It's really scary, this bit at the end of the film. There's another way of getting her, because they couldn't kill her with the Orgasmatron or the um, sharp, teethy uh, dolls, was um, death by budgie. And look at that, isn't that disgusting? Look, they're biting all the legs there and the bum and everything. That's really rude and disgusting. But yeah, it was colourful, very trippy film. There she is in a lovely green colour space chick outfit. But it's not space, it's out there laterally. Yeah? Yeah. Just I want to be 52s. Now, I don't want to get copyrighted, but like I said, guys, a treat. Okay, now, I don't want to get copyrighted because I lose my channel. So what I'm going to do, okay, and I can't play the theme tune, even though I want to play the theme tune of Barbarella Psychedella. Let me speed it up. Let me speed it up. I can do that. Oh, very good. And um, what happens, right? In the beginning, she's in supposed to be, uh, let me just put that down, zero G. Yeah? She's floating around and shit. So how are they doing that in 1967? What technologies are they doing like they do on the ISS nowadays? Or is she underwater and they just give her the dry hair look? But like, like I said, guys, this is disgusting. I can't even believe they did this. This is cruel uh, to... All young men of a certain age at this who had to go through all of this. So basically she gets to buy here, right? Okay, and then she takes off her spacesuit. Um, I'll put it on by you. Hopefully I won't get copyrighted. This is wrong on so many levels and disgusting. I'm gonna look away, by the way. Barbarella. Oh, hang on here. Let's have a little bit of Barbarella Psychedella. <gasps> right, it's fucking disgusting. I can't. Fuck off, David Hemming! Fuck off, David Hemming! Please! <gasps> oh my god. Yeah? So this was at the beginning of a film, guys, yeah? Yeah? You could see everything. This is disgusting, this is. I, I know, I'm, I'm not even happy. <laughs> Barbarella Psychedella. She's a chick, not a fella. <laughs> Do you think I'm going to get away with this? Fuck it. Why not? So, yeah, Jane Fonda Appreciation Society. Today, she's in water, hanging upside down, in the all together, sort of cavorting and stuff. She's in water. She's kicking her legs. I wonder how they do the dry air thing. Check the Phoenician with the mirror as well. There's clues all the way through this film. That's why we was looking into it, actually. I thought there might have been a secret, hidden thing behind it, which it probably is, actually. So, yeah. Fight of British Mind Blowing Mud Blood, if you don't know, alternative history and much more. Okay. Um, I got a book coming out in a month or so. It won't be too long. You'll be able to take pre orders and you'll be able to basically click that link there and find out about the first great Flat Earth British think tank bookage, which is totally great on Flat Earth. And you can uh, donate to my channel here. You can go on Pinterest and my Instagram's really popular. 
uh, go on there, I do live things on all that. Go on there and I'll add you. Okay. I mean, these are all our fantastic subjects. It's just mind blowing. We've been doing this for years now. We're going right into it to an epic level. Um, just, it's unprecedented what we do here. And there's my son. I got to shout him while striking metals. I don't have to, but I will. So there's me, front of British. Uh, 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 uh. Wow, fucking hell. That was a roller coaster. 900 of you still watching Jane Fond. You should be disgusted with yourself. You should have thought, I'm not watching this. I'm going to just switch off now. That's why it would have been the right thing to do. You. <laughs> Barbarella, psychedella. She's a chick, not a fella. It's okay, hippie. You can look now. It's safe. Yeah, you can look now. Okay. So, yeah, that was cruel to do to us as a boy. It wasn't, you know, as a boy, I had a nightmare watching that fucking thing going down. Look, this is embarrassing. <laughs> Oh, ta ta ta, as it is. Don't worry about it, guys. This is the real world here, yeah? the real flat earth Britishness. So, let me um, bring everything to a conclusion, okay? What we've been talking about. So, we discovered what the ship was or who the ship was, and there's no doubt in my mind whatsoever because I can't think of another more successful, better, um, more intelligent geniuses put together think tank than anywhere else on earth. I've, you know, what has happened here, and it's defining what's happening in the outside world like a reset, where no coinky dink we were talking about resets for years coming up to the reset. Now the mainstream use the phrase reset. I seen that dirty bastard um, Russell Brand doing a video the other day. He jumped on the old fucking reset bandwagon, hasn't he? fucking years too late but they're using it so that gives us the strong strong suspicion that we may have had something to do with all of this okay so eventually they will reset all the money they will have to get rid of everyone's debt everyone start fresh that's what needs to happen anyway can't just keep terrorizing people so god needs our help which makes sense because if you know basically like i say there's no use moaning to god bitching about your reality and stuff because he ain't fucking listening because he's busy being you. We are gods. Okay? We manifest this reality. This is how reality works. They've hijacked consciousness, guys, and took, her away, took us away from the true source. We're getting it back. It's mind-blowing. So anyway, imagination has no limit in affinity. Any craft can be a boat. Or any collective can be a boat. The crew, the FEB Flat Earth British crew. So um, the actors are all in place. Who are the props in your play? You're playing the part which you fought from the start. It was an honest one. How do I plead an actor indeed? That's Super Tramp, Crime of the Century. In 1972, that album was made and they tell us everything that's going down now, like they didn't fucking know 30, 40 years in advance about this. Because they did. They did. So anyway, God. Um, is desperate, wanting to non-exist, and the clue is sleep. God needs to shut off and reboot, but completely shut off from this realm. And sleep is a big, big part of the whole narrative, is it not? What is going on with that, I think, is um, God not wanting to exist the whole time. And let's be it, it can be really fucking tedious, this realm. And, you know, he's produced it, he's created it. Um, it must be utterly fucking disappointing. And then he put evil there, but that is only through a search to find out which people will do that evil stuff through free will, or which people will be not, will be good. It's, you could call it a test if you want, but it's not. It's more. It's much more. It's much more. It was deeper than tests. So anyway, thank you for everybody. I'm going to share a few of you um, up on the screen now, and then I'm going to be chucking off early. It'll be a two-hour vlog today, because I've been doing these three-hour things, and Gee, I am actually getting knackered now. Conspiracy Factualist, good to see you, my friend Itch. Israel, Martin, uh, what's your take on Native Americans before the colonies uh, to expand? You need to, mate, you need to catch up on Flat Earth British, honest to God. We're, we're miles ahead of that now. It's the Phoenicians, mate. They occupied the whole of America. America's Egypt. America's the old world. Okay. Yes, yes, it is. It is. And, and Washington, D.C., Rome. This is how it is. It's just, they just, Told it was all in Europe. You're in the old world, mate. I wouldn't worry about all of that. The Native Americans, they're arrivals. Dan MC, ordinary bear. Good to see you. Is this a rainbow wave? 
somewhere over the rainbow, eh? Way up high. Uh, surf skate adventures. What's happening with Richard Lopez? I don't know. He's still on my Facebook. He posted a couple of days ago. Should be all right. Check on, check on him now, you've said. I haven't seen him. I, he's a busy man. He works. So, does good jobs. He's a good, good, uh, good worker. Does a uh, He's ambulance driver, isn't he? In New York City, it can be fucking really stressful, especially in Corona, corona times. Uh, Juicy Jack and Sage, glad you enjoyed. Um, yes, wasn't they enjoyable? Yeah, I'm really happy about that. So, Christina Walker, hippie shake. Sorry to offend your poor, sensitive Brian. <laughs> Roma. Uh, we will get it back sooner the better time's ticking away you know that's that's the key here is the time people need to get brave now this spring get off the fucking ass do something about it all is my advice this this winter was over with like that we didn't even have a winter here in britain not really didn't even get cold like one frost two frosts and then it's back to spring the daffodils outside now's the time don't fuck around god save us all is the reverse See, she, Mel just worked it straight out. It's exactly what I thought earlier. I thought they reversed it all, and God save. And I thought, well, God save the Queen, God save us all. I thought, yeah, exactly. It's fucking reversed. It's making absolute perfect sense to my Brian. And then by via that, we free everybody, the whole dome. I slaved them because what they got coming. Not one of us are going to want to be living with. Can you imagine if we could let them carry on with this now where we're all going to be in five years? Don't even think about it. Tricky who? Good to see you, Dutch Rebel. Isabella. Carol. So, yeah, I really do appreciate so many people and nearly a thousand people retaining you for a couple of hours. Really, really grateful. Thank you for that. Make sure to share this out, please, this video. And like if you did. Um, and I will be back in a day or so because um, basically I need to go and sort my shit out. I've been working like back and um, knackered now. but i'm glad i did that and got all of that off my chest because i'm going to sleep now so i hope you enjoyed the um o the oslo mud flood i thought they were pretty fantastic it's pretty self-evident as they're digging the mud out and it is really deep and everything there is a mud flood and uh, the keys any more clues in the language please do share okay if you any etymologists out there and do word breakdowns um it seems that the, most of the clues are buried in the language is what we're finding especially with uh, you know the results of basically fellowship friendship relationship or being a collective uh, passage and the fact that we're in a collective and a significant one very significant one think about it who else could it possibly be of course it was fucking us can't believe i missed it anyway thanks for that black bums peace and love and harmony to you all have an epic day and evening and whatever it is you do today enjoy it okay get out and enjoy some of the sunshine go and have a walk go and stand on the grass okay and if you can't take your shoes off as it's cold touch the grass go and ground yourself you'll feel fantastic after that's my advice so thank you leslie uh lindsay excuse me lindsay denise max techno kid fatma only bear esther <laughs> tom, tom kitten and love in the midst and joy and jilly flat earth madness madness they call it madness well if this is madness well it is isn't it when was the last moment of sanity any of them lot had they're fucking gone aren't they like stupid zombies Ugh. since when did we have like signs telling us what to do on buses and news articles and stuff it's all kind of weird Get the fuck off so flat now thank you geo shifter thank you for popping by my brother some so good to see you here always love to see geo my old brother in arms and love and dick and tricky who and alva billy my brother and mgb and mud Flooder, yo and glenn is your communicado and paul mayers and valerie and dragon sage and jazz soldier the girls um, are here from the angels mm. stacy from massachusetts massachusetts um never heard of that show before what show oh oh i don't know i can't remember i was on a bomb that always happens i've short term memory loss it's brilliant um memory for everything like happened years ago i've got like 
probably the closest thing to photographic memory if there is such a thing i remember believable details i scrape up from my mind from way way back uh dick i said that and everybody thank you so much for coming there's rocker there and i'm um, sorry if i missed anybody squirrel snipers my brother there scotty wadles thank you for super scotty he always does that much love to you in chicago land and David Greg, I'm fond of push. <laughs> Good little joke to finish. Nice one, brother. I love, I love that. I love that. And uh, Barbarella is dope. Fuck yeah. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Watch it. Watch it later. You can get it on one, two, three movies. Go watch Barbarella. Barbarella, psychedella. I'll put on a copyright and lose this video. Now, that'd be shit. I doubt it, though. Anyway. Peace and love, I gotta go, I need a cuppa, and it was really awesome, what an evening tonight, I hope you enjoyed that, and I think we're a long way further, I think we're light years away, light years ahead, everything else on YouTube, there's no doubt about it in my mind, and where this is going, is just super fantastical, yeah, beyond any of our dreams, beyond any of our dreams, kind of fonder too, <laughs> that's good, isn't it, fonder, I never thought of that, and fonder, Jane, and fonder, Jane. Oh, that's clever. I didn't think of that. Go. Missed that one, see? Breaking down in the words again. <laughs> time to rewatch in slow mo, man. Thanks. You say that all the time. I spoke really clear English today. Acted all posh, didn't I? No, I never. <laughs> Platforms. Try Esther. Try everybody. Try Jenny. Try Damien. Have a good night, all. And I'll see you on the next one, okay? Won't be long. Fonda, fonda. <laughs> You fond of fonder. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? Well, we have a hoot, aren't you? <laughs> Things I think I have off. Think I have to put on my channel. It's just crazy. All goes down well. I get away with murder tonight. It's great. Anyway, peace and love to you all. Have a great evening. Have a great week. And I'll be back in a day or two when I got catched up with you all guys after this post, okay? And the last one, which is still busy, by the way. Ciao. Ciao, Denise. To chatty greens, fat thumbs chew. Have a good evening, all. Peace and love. I'm Aria. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> Fonda, Fonda. <laughs> best one yet. Who wins the prize there for the best joke of the night? Is David Greg. Fonda, Fonda. <laughs> Fonda said. All right, that's enough. That's enough. All right, all right. Gotta go and just have me cracking up, you lot. So funny. Anyway, peace and love you all. See you soon. Nasta, Mel. Tyler. Tyler, everybody.